that I'm living in a nightmare neighborhood. It's really scary. For years, these neighbors have been watching the city's homeless crisis spread across parts of southeast Portland. Now it's right outside their front door. I want to cry. I just want my house back. Christina Hartnett lives on 80th and Powell, where a majority of the campers stay. My lawn is now becoming a public bathroom. She fears leaving her house just to go to work. And it is scary when you have grown men meth raging in your driveway. The last thing I feel safe doing is going out and saying, hey, can I can you please move so I can go to work? Calling the police and city is an everyday chore with little reward. So far, no one has come to help us. Central City Concern Clean Start crews assessed this site Thursday. It was one of about 1,900 other campsites reported just this week. In the past 10 days, they found 272 encampments that pose a greater health and safety risk, which is why they haven't removed the camps in this neighborhood. But just getting the city to come out and assess it has been a full-time job. I have to report from like four different four different bureaus, and then I have to report that report to a report, and then I have to report that report to a second report, and it's the only way to get any kind of traction. I feel like nobody hears us. Nobody cares about us. This mother didn't want to be identified on camera, afraid of retaliation from those living on the streets. She rarely lets her children outside to play. It's very sad, because my they're just kids, so they want to play. I don't know where they're coming from. Tess has lived in this neighborhood for 35 years. These boards now cover her front door windows after they were smashed by those living on the streets. She also installed security cameras around her house. Scared. Most of all scared because I don't know what they're going to go next. It's also affecting a nearby restaurant. I've come into the bathroom and found people standing there in their underwear scrubbing up in the sink in a sports bar in the bathroom. It unnerves our customers when they pull in and they see people overdosing in the, on the sidewalks out in front of our restaurant. I sleep right here in the back seat. Jennifer Suprick is 43 years old. I'm, I'm an addict and my family doesn't condone it. She lives in this broken down van on the Southeast Powell Boulevard frontage road. So I just lay the seats down and we can climb in the back. It's one of the areas neighbors are afraid to go. I mean, we can coexist. It's just a matter of some of some homeless people have they're resentful towards the neighborhood because of the way the tr they treat them. I think that it's not always what it seems. You know, we aren't always what we seem. Brendan Harvey has spent most of his life in and out of homelessness. So usually it has something to do with relapse and after a relapse, you know, my housing usually falls out from under me and then I usually have nowhere to turn. He understands why neighbors are frustrated. So I feel like they have a right to be upset. He's seen firsthand the increase in violence from some of the campers. I feel like it's just gotten more bold, more rash, you know, people aren't as afraid to do things that are, you know, have to do with criminality. It's, it is going to take one of us getting severely hurt or killed before, before they will do anything to come help us. Meanwhile, please come help me. Does our city do something about it? Are they doing something about these people that need some help? This never ending cry for help continues. It's just been going on so long now that we're all over it. They're over it. We're over it. Everybody's over it. Now, the city only has the resources to remove about 50 encampments a week, and they say that they assess each report about 48 hours after they get it, and they receive hundreds of reports for high risk camps every day. Ashley. Yeah, Blair, you feel for everybody there. Thank you. Shalom, Akim. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Yahweh HaKadosh, Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the elect. Just want to go into this quick lesson, which is based upon you know this video uh, that you've seen, which it was a you know a news clip. And what we're witnessing, man, you know we're in very beautiful times. Okay, we're literally witnessing the complete and utter destruction of Babylon the Great. You know, you wouldn't see things like this happening in the past, man. Okay, these Edomites, they were on their high horses, man. Now all these cities are completely through. Babylon is done, man. The only thing left for this place is for Yahweh Shai to send these last plagues, 
you know, have this economic collapse come and then destroy this place with, with nuclear missiles. Okay, because there's no coming back for this place, man. Homelessness is at an all-time high. The crime rate is, is, you know, astronomically up. Okay, and then you have this uh, inflation, which is just adding on to the hell that these people are catching, man. Okay, which is going to cause more people to commit crimes. You got people crying because their, their neighborhoods have been inundated with, with homeless people. All right. It's basically already like a, a post-apocalyptic movie. You know, crime is rampant. The cops ain't doing nothing about it, you know. And these people are scared to, uh, you know, come on camera and show their face for fear of retaliation. All right. And this is just, you know, a sign that we're that much closer to getting out of here, man. Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai is destroying this place. He's breaking this, this society down. This is uh, Baruch 4 and 25. It says, My children, suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from the Most High, for thine enemy hath persecuted thee, and we were persecuted by this damn devil. We caught pure hell under this damn devil, man. Okay, the hardcore bondage that he put us in when we got released, quote unquote, from slavery, we caught more hell. You know, the lynchings, the, the, the Jim Crow, okay, uh, the vagrancy laws, you know, the, the loitering laws, okay, and we still catching hell unto this day, all right, this damn devil ain't lit up, all right, it says, suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from the most high, for thine enemy hath persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and tread upon his neck, and we in the beginning stages of seeing his destruction, man. The ultimate destruction is going to come when you hop by Shemi Shai sends those nuclear missiles. But we already see a society breaking down, man. You would not see this in the past, okay? Back in the 50s when this nigga was in, a, in his heyday, you know, when he was still spitting in niggas' faces, you know, when he was kicking uh, uh, wet backs, you know? You wouldn't see an Edomite living, living on the side of the road, man, living in a tent, being addicted to drugs, you know? That, that was a shameful thing. You know, all these Edomites, they had uh, families, they, they had their jobs, man, they had their white picket fence, you know, the the, the leave it to beaver uh, uh, days, man. When Esau was doing good, you don't see that no more. And that's a sign of times, it's a sign that Esau is, is falling, okay? It says, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and tread upon his neck. And we're going to tread upon these damn devil's neck, man. We're going to put y'all in hardcore bondage. It says, my delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as a flock caught of the enemies. Okay, see, and that's another thing that we have to continually keep in our minds, man. We are still the delicate ones of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. We're still dear unto him. So all the things that we've been going through, he's witnessed this, man. Okay, he's going to pay everybody back that, that put their hands on us. Okay, we're still his chosen people, man. We're still special in the sight of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, despite... What position we are in down here upon the earth. It says, Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto the Most High, for ye shall be remembered of him that bought these things upon you. And us seeing these things shows that we're being remembered by Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Because who's in control of events that take place down here upon the earth? The Heavenly Father, man. The Most High is causing these things to happen. The Most High is causing a homelessness problem in uh, Babylon. Okay, the Most High is causing this economic collapse. The Most High is causing all of these diseases to take hold, man. The Most High is causing these, uh, uh, you know, this these plagues of drugs to sweep Babylon, man. That's the doing of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. And why is he doing it? Because he's remembering his people. Okay, he's jacking his place up, man, for the nation of Israel's sake and for his name's sake, first and foremost. Okay, because the Most High made a promise to the nation of Israel. He's going to keep that promise. It says, for as it was your mind to go astray from the Most High, so being returned, seek him ten times more. It says, for he that bought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. You should be rejoicing at these things, man. We're that much closer to this place being completely destroyed. Okay? The more the society breaks down, okay, the more the, the, the fabric of the society breaks down, okay, the more, uh, uh, you know, of these people's morals go out the window the closer we are to this place being destroyed. It says, take a good heart, O Jerusalem, for he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Okay? And how, how do we find comfort? First and foremost in the scriptures, also in us witnessing the prophecies take place. Okay? Us witnessing the prophecies come to pass, which means what? 
Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai is working. Okay? Everything he said is true, man. Which means, well, ultimately he's going to deliver the nation of Israel from the destruction of Babylon the Great and grant us the kingdom. It says, take a good heart, O Jerusalem, for he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoiced at thy fall. Who afflicted us? These other nations, mainly Esau, Edom. And he's the one catching hell, man. His cities are through. These cities don't belong to you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Okay? You didn't found Portland. You didn't found L.A. You didn't found San Francisco. You didn't found, found Seattle, man. These are Edomite cities. Okay? That's why his policy is the things that are enforced when you go into these places, man. The law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai not being enforced in these places. Okay? They don't have a Gadite uh, law being established. That, that way is over, man. Okay? This is something that Esau created. Now, look at what's become of it. Okay? And why is his cities in this in this condition? Because Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai is plaguing them. It says, Miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoiced at thy fall. Look at, this, look at the, the situation that they're in, man. Addicted to drugs. You got Edomites stealing cars and running chop shops out of homeless camps, man. Okay, this this is unprecedented. Imagine this in the, in the fifties, you in the, in the future, you know, you would tell an Edomite, look, man, it's gonna come a time where you're gonna live in a tent, okay, on the side of a freeway, and to get by, to get money, you're gonna have to steal cars and and take the parts off and sell them. He'd have laughed at you, man. But look, look at what's happening. It says, miserable are the cities which thy children served. Miserable is she that received thy son. So these cities are completely done. Okay, and America as a whole is finished, man. There's no bouncing back for this place. All right, and you got this same situation taking place throughout this country. Okay, homelessness at all time high. All right, crime is going up. Violent crime is going up. And then you got the cost of living going up, which is going to cause more crime. Okay. This thing ain't going to get turned around, man. <laughs> All right? Just like the Most High said in 2 Ezra, the 16th chapter. Okay? The plague shall not return, you know, pretty much until they accomplish what the Most High wants them to accomplish. You know, which, let me bring it out. I don't want to butcher it. This is 2 Ezra 16 and 3. It says, a sword is sent upon you, and who may turn it back? A fire is sent among you, and who may quench it? Plagues are sent unto you, and what is he that may drive them away? You can't drive away these plagues, man. Okay? Nothing you do is going gonna, is gonna to stop what's going on here in Babylon. Okay? You can't fix the homelessness problem. You ain't going to be able to fix this drug problem that's going on. You ain't going to be able to stop this runaway inflation. Okay? The only thing that's going to stop it are those thermonuclear missiles. <laughs> And once that happens, you're, you're, you're all the way done. It says, plagues are sent unto you, and what is he that may drive them away? May any man drive away an hungry lion in the wood? And the, the answer to that is no. If you come across a hungry lion, he's going to eat your ass, man. All right? No amount of screaming or, or you know, rock thorn is going to stop him from, from ripping you apart. It says, or may anyone quench the fire in stubble when they have begun to burn? May one again turn the arrow that is shot of a strong archer. The mighty Lord, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, sendeth the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? Nobody can drive them away because the Heavenly Father himself has sent these plagues unto you. And he ain't, he ain't calling them back, man. Not until they fulfill their purpose. And what's the purpose of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai? To wipe America from off the face of the earth. This is back in Baruch. Uh, 4 and 32 it says miserable are the cities which thy children serve miserable is she that received thy sons for as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad of thy fall so shall she be grieved for her own desolation these Edomites are hurting man okay to see their beloved city go this way you know to see it be inundated with homelessness okay to see you know just feces on the street man this hurts these Edomites you know, because they actually believed that the city would be pristine, okay, until they had kids. You know, they would pass the city to their kids. Their children would grow up here and inherit these cities and keep it running like how it was when they were young. But now look at it, man. Okay. So Esau's hurting right now. 
It says, For as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad of thy fall, so shall she be grieved for her own desolation. We're in the beginning stages of you, you Edomites grieving, man. Your cities ain't coming back. Okay? There's no way you can fix the problem that your cities have. All right? And wait, wait till the economy collapses. Okay? And wait till your Habashim, Yahweh turns the plagues up more, man. You really going to be mourning. This is just the beginning. All right? It's going to get much worse. It says, For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude, and her pride shall be turned into mourning. And Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is doing that. Okay? And this is really going to happen when the Most High destroys this place. Because this is the pride and joy of you Edomites. Okay? America. You know? Look, look at look at the, the architecture. The tall buildings that we've built. We, we've conquered and tamed this land. You know? We built railroads across the whole continent. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai going to throw this all down, man. Everything that you you damn devils are proud of, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai going to utterly destroy it. You ain't going to have no reason to have pride in the kingdom. Your society going to com be completely gone, man. Okay, there's not going to be any memorial that you Edomites had a great civilization. All right? You could talk all that mess in the kill. Yeah, we were, well, hey, just like you you tell Jake, we was Kangs. You know, yeah, we had a, we had a great civilization. You know, we, we built tall. You're going to tell your, your children that, man, in slavery. Okay, yeah, we had tall buildings. We built skyscrapers as tall, buildings as tall as the sky. Hey, but look at you now. You, you got chains on your neck, man, and you working for Jake. It says, for I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude, and her pride shall be turned into mourning. For fire shall come upon her from the everlasting long to endure, and she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. And those devils are talking about these desert, desert creatures that's going to dwell here, man. Okay, and that, that's going to be a real blot on you Edomite's reputation, man. Okay, you're supposed to be, you know, this such a high, you know, uh, nation. You know, you're supposed to be uh, uh, held in such high regard. You exalt yourself like you're the best nation on the earth. The Most High is going to wipe your whole society out, man. Okay? Here it is. You boasting that all the things that you've done, the, the achievements that you've accomplished. You know, you've built all these bridges that span miles over water. You know, the, all these different uh, superstructures. You know, you, you, you've you tamed uh, 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 and manipulated the land to your own liking. You know, you've you built islands, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, going to destroy all of this, man. Okay, you ain't going to have no reason to boast in the kingdom. What, what can you boast about? You know, oh, the society that you used to have that the Most High completely destroyed? Okay. This is a Jeremiah 51 and 7. It says, Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, <coughs> Babylon have been a golden cup in the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai's hand that made all the earth drunken. And see, <laughs> this is what you Edomites fail to realize, man. The Most High set you up for a purpose. Okay, He set you up first and foremost to whip, you know, the nation of Israel to punish us for our iniquity and also to lead these other nations down the path of wickedness, to lead them down that left hand path. And at the end of that, you're going to be destroyed. All right. Here it is, you, you boasting and bragging about how big and bad you are. The Most High literally created you to destroy you, man. All right? He literally lifted you up out of that low estate that you was in in the caves to allow you to build these, you know, magnificent structures just so he can throw it down, man, and destroy you and put you in slavery. All right? It says, Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad, okay? And all these nations have accepted and took hold of the philosophies that you push out, man. That's why you see these skyscrapers all throughout the world. These other nations are following after the model of you Edomites, okay? They've established, uh, you know, democracies or republics in their lands because they're following after the model of you Edomites, man, okay? They've taken hold to this witchcraft that you uh, practice, because they're falling after your model, man. So they're going to get judged right along with you. All right? And they're seeing the end result of what happens when you implement the Edomite way amongst your uh, society. Okay? Amongst your nation. Everything goes to, uh, you know, to hell in a handbasket, man. Your, your society gets destroyed. Because Esau does not know how to run a society properly. Okay? 
The Most High didn't create him to do that. He's a slave. You following a dude that has no clue on how things are supposed to be run. You know, it's like you putting a, a entry level dude in a management position. He he just got on the job. It's his first day. He has no business running things, man. Okay, and that's Esau. He he's an entry level dude. He has no business running the earth. And y'all, you other nations are following him to your own demise. Verse 8, it says, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her take balm for her pain? If so, she may be healed. And Babylon is going to go down quick. Okay, and it is, it's already happening, man. All right. Since 1970 up until now, that's been uh, very quick. You know, that's not a long period of time to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Okay, and then when the Most High sends those missiles and he really, you know, ramps things up, the scriptures say, say it's only going to take one hour for him to destroy this place. It says, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go, everyone, into his own country, for her judgment reaches unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. The Lord, Yahweh Yahweh Shai, hath brought forth our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord, Yahweh Yahweh Shai, our power. And what's the work of the Lord? Him completely destroying this place, man, sending those thermonuclear missiles down here. It says, make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord, Yahweh Yahweh Shai, hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, for his device is against Babylon to destroy it, because it is the vengeance of the Lord, Yahweh Yahweh Shai, the vengeance of his temple. And who's the temple of the Most High? You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Okay, so one of the main reasons why Yahweh Shai is doing what he's doing here in Babylon, okay, causing this homelessness to get out of control, is for, you know, the revenge, okay, that, uh, you know, to revenge Esau, Edom, for the things that he did to you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Okay, so you should be rejoicing at these things, man. Rejoicing at the inflation. You know, rejoicing at, you know, the position that these Edomites are getting put in, man. Rejoicing at the downfall of this place. You know, because that means our salvation is right around the corner. This is Luke 21 and 28. It says, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth not. So I just want to go into that. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai willing. It was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Bashim Yahweh Double honors to the apostles and elders, the great millstone. Shalom.